Today's video we start with a hydration chart. Am I hydrated? Aim for clear urine at least 10 times a day. Eat a diet rich in fresh fruits and vegetables. Drink a quart of water before meals. Thank you. Welcome. Alright. This is what we've been buying in bulk, these Lankwood juices. This is about $120 US, sir. Got a few, few of these a week. Crazy, isn't it? But, if you want the good stuff, you gotta pay for it. Mm. So about $13 each in Australia. Give them a wholesale for about 10 bucks each. Beautiful drop. So that's gonna be the first starter. Just went for a little bite roll then. Let's get to it, let's answer some questions. Let's answer some questions. Post your questions in the, in the video. Post your questions in the videos. Quick question, Harley, have you ever wondered how many extra people you would reach if your videos looked more professional or colorful? Like Christina's, when you talk about Americans being more gullible or trusting, I have a feeling how a video looks could be a big part of it, I agree. Because they're so used to flashy talking talk shows and people wearing makeup. That's their culture, the fakeness. I'm not saying you need to make up, wear makeup or do anything fake, but I can think of a few simple improvements you could make to improve things. I agree. I agree that I could, you know, people, people trust fake people more, typically, you know. I, I, I've worked in the gym industry a long time. Uh, well, I, sorry, I, I worked in the gym industry a long time ago. Back in 1999 was the first time I got a job in the gym industry. And the first thing my first employer said was, Kerry, he, was he was Kerry O'Brien, his name was, he said, I don't give a fuck. He said that. <laughs> I'm in this job interview thing, and this is all professional, proper, and Kerry's like, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a flying fuck if you got a PhD in astrophysics, whatever. All I give a fuck about is if you can establish rapport with my clientele base. I don't give a fuck how fake you have to be or whatever. You tell them, I want them to feel comfortable with you. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I learned from the get-go that most people want to be treated very fakely. How you going? What's happening? Yeah. I can't do that though. I can't do that. If I'm genuinely being nice to someone, it's because I am. I can't put on the fake show. And then when I worked in the shoe store, it was the same thing as well. Just that, I don't know. F for me, I don't like that. But would I reach more people? Definitely. But it's not me, it's not who I am. I can't be fake. I can't be fake like that. You know, I can put on characters and like Bowser Bars and stuff, but that's different. I can't put on a fake character of, you know, putting out a persona there that I'm some real nice hugs and love person, but at the end of the day, <laughs> I'm just like a corporate legal shark or whatever. I can't do that. I can't talk about spirituality and that. And sure, it gets more people on. I see it all the time, like, you know, ATM and a lot of people use that angle, but for me, it's just so fake. It's just so fake that I just can't get into it. I can't get into it. I'm getting these cranks off. So I oh, fake, I just can't do fake at all. I That's one of my, my personal goals was when I worked in that gym industry, I, I tried it. I did I was. I admit I was fake for a bit. You know, I'd tell people, yeah, you need the whey powder or protein powders and all this stuff. Because they're like, I want to look like that person over there. And I knew that guy who worked in the gym was on steroids, but I said, no, I'm like, yeah, he's like, yeah, we got this, he, yeah, whey powder, we sell that, it's really good. You know, take a scoop after workout, it's really good. <laughs> Go get your branch, man, essence. <laughs> but I didn't tell them that the guy they wanted to look like was on steroids, or the girl who was 
you know, the whole who I'm work with was on steroids and you know who'd fucking just been starved himself for the last six weeks, and that's why they look, you know, look lean. But they're training up for a, a competition. It's they're in the cutting phase, so they, they don't look like that all year long. But I I lied to people. I was fake. I can't lie to people like that. With basic obvious thing, I can't do it. You know, and they look and say, well, you know. There's, there's two ways of lying. Is like if, if you hide the truth, you know, or if you if you say oh, I've got a maid. No, I don't have a maid. It's a personal assistant or a living nanny or whatever. But it's not a maid. You know, sort of. It's a bit like saying someone says, "Oh, I saw you driving a, a, a Ferrari the other day." Nah, wasn't me. Be drive a Lambo or whatever. You know, it's sort of that. I can't be fake. I just can't do it. But what I have taken on board is people's advice about video editing and stuff, getting a better mic. This audio is probably not good because it's a bit echoey, but I think things like that are good because you can get it out better. But being fake is something just can't I can't do well at. After working so many years in retail and all that stuff, and just seeing it, it just it doesn't sit well with well with me. I guess that's why I can spot fake people a bit better than the average person because I've worked in the industry for so long. But then again, I still get tricked, you know? I still get tricked. I still get tricked. But it's all good. It's all about learning, you know? Life's about learning, and the older I get now, it's pretty cool. You just get to learn more and deal with so many different types of people. It's fantastic. You can really learn quick, a lot quicker than I would otherwise. You get to learn a lot quicker than I would otherwise. I think being fake is like often when people get to meet you in real person, they they get really let down, you know. Because how many times have you met someone you've seen on YouTube and they're all like, "Hey guys, love and hugs and whatever," and you meet him in real life and it's like. It's just a letdown. We meet as some celebrity or whatever you've put up on a pedestal, and it's like you meet me real life, and it's like whatever, mate. You know, just a letdown. So I never want to be a letdown in person. That's my personal goal. Duro, can you make a video on caffeine and the effects of coffee in the body? Well, caffeine works in that it stimulates adrenaline. All right, it stimulates adrenaline, so. How it, what it does is, because caffe- how does it do that, Harley? How does it do it? Caffeine's a neurotoxin, right? It's a neurotoxin, which means that you put it in your body and your body goes, fuck, we've got like this neurotoxin. We've got to protect the brain. Let's get this stuff out of our body. So it releases adrenaline to, to open up all your arteries and veins and everything. Just vasodilate, just poof, increase your blood flow, increase your heart rate, get everything out. It's not like having a gun put to your head, sort of thing fight or flight response. So caffeine, if you are going to use it, I've used caffeine, I've used speed, I've used meth. Caffeine is basically a lower level of speed. It's a legal speed. It's in a, you know, a stimulant. I would say if you're gonna use caffeine, I don't recommend it, but I only use it a few times a year. The daily use of caffeine, I don't recommend it. If you've got to get through your exams or whatever, or I know, you know people use smart drugs like Adderall and Ritalin and stuff. I think if you're going to use any stimulant, do so very, very sparingly and understand that you have to recover from them. Never use stimulants for weight loss, like fentamine, duramine. Those things are very effective, but long-term they fuck up your metabolism. So you might lose a bit of weight from doing that stuff, but it'll catch up with you in the long run, unfortunately. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. Freely done those fentamine drugs and stuff like that. And you know, fucked her metabolism up for a while. So I recommend skipping the caffeine, the, the green tea, the theobromine, the chocolate. If you got, the, if you must have these things, do so a few times a year, and make sure you get enough sleep and water when you do that. But uh, <laughs> people are laughing. Hey, I will drink ten cups of coffee a day. What the fuck are you talking about? But yeah, but <laughs> that's just gonna fuck up your immune system long term, man. You know. Heaps of people out there. I could do a lot, be more, a lot more productive if I did the, 
the bulletproof coffee diet with modafinil. Like Dave Asprey, the bulletproof coffee exec guy, he does modafinil. Five, 300 milligrams of modafinil day for the last decade plus caffeine. I wouldn't want to have his adrenal glands. <laughs> if he said, Harley, we can swap you Dave's adrenal glands and his kidney and liver for yours, I'd be like, fuck that, man. I ain't using those fucking organs because they're like, they're getting thrashed. So yeah, you can do stuff for 5, 10, 20 years, whatever, but I don't know. Especially if you've got kids. When all these guys got kids, aren't they thinking about the kids' future? Like, kids don't need money, man. They need a fucking dad. So caffeine, skip it. If you're gonna have it a few times a year, max. Why not just have dates as a backup plan? Good, great question. Dates pretty much are my backup plan, but I wanna, I wanna leave people a bit more backup plans. Because how many people are gonna, gonna wanna go out to a restaurant and have dates for dinner? <laughs> you know, how many people are gonna do that? How many people are gonna do that? So, while dates are my preferred backup plan, I like to sort of, what's the word? Make it okay to eat McDougal style meals if you want to. You don't have to, you can have dates. I think dates are a better, better option. But if you wanna have other things, then I want, we want to show people that it's okay. It's not going to make you obese. It's not going to, you know, make you ill or whatever. So there's are other options. So I'm not concerned too much because I feel great, feel fine on, on starches and that as a bit of an occasional thing. I couldn't live personally on a diet of starches. Some people can, I can't. I need to have my fruits. I need to spend so much money on fruit each week that I'll spend more money as an individual on personal fruit consumption for myself than anyone else I know on the planet. I need to eat a lot of fruit. I can't, you know, do what, what I do on diet, purely starches. Even though I think starches are great, fruit's up here for me. Starches is back up plan. Everything else, not even in the equation. Not even in the equation. So if you want to have, like another person said the other day, why don't you just have like, Unripe fruit from the supermarket and ah fuck <laughs> instead of organic juice or, or juices or whatever it's like eat unripe fruit to get your calories first of all you won't get any calories because there's no sh- not enough sugar there yet so you're just eating this like bland you might as well just drink water <laughs> often the people are giving us advice we've cycled across the country in Australia on 100% fruits and veggies before we've done that so we know what it takes to get calories in. Um, I remember when I did that, I lost fucking so much weight. When I went in, I did, yeah, I, was, I was lost fucking most of the amount of weight. So while you can do it, it's not really going to be sustainable unless you've got a lot of weight to lose. Otherwise, you're just going to get down to such a light weight that, you know, athletically it might be all right, but everyone else around is going to freak out. I mean, people already freak out now that we're so lean. You know, people already go, you guys are too lean. If we ate 100% just fruit and vegetables with no backup plan, we would be scaringly lean, you know? So it's great when people give us options, but, you know, these people who critique us or whatever, if they live with us just for a week, <laughs> they'd be like, give me a slice of that vegan pizza. And like if, if John Cole lived in Australia and he went to the organic wholesalers, I spent $837 yesterday at organic wholesalers. I'll get the receipt right up. See it here, Steve's Organics. See it there? 874, well, 874, it's about US dollars as well. So that's for one person for about two weeks. So that's, that's pretty good, but that was a lot of, that's a mostly, that's a lot of starches in here. It's a lot of rice, it's a lot of cereals. You know, work out the calories from fruit, but you know, that's a fair bit of starches here. So if that was pure fruit, would be easily, easily three thousand dollars. This many calories. I'll do the math and work it out. So that's why we give people an option, a backup plan, because some people might want to eat, not not want to eat dates or whatever. Or well, they might want to eat dates. We give people both options. And people say, well, "You're so hard on your website." 
People get banned for promoting onions. I don't get banned for promoting onions. I get banned because they fucking fuck around. The mo- they disrespect the moderators. So the moderators just go, see you later. I don't get banned because they promote onions. And then they go on forums, oh, they got, they got on the 30 bananas a day sucks.com. I got banned from 30 bananas a day. Oh my God. They got on a hate speech forum. And then they, what they, they expect the moderators to them back on. So like, come on. If you're grateful, you won't get banned. If you, you know, if you fuck around, then the moderators aren't going to take your shit. They're going to say, here's the door. See you later. But people are welcome back if they apologize and, you know. But if you go on a, on the hate speech forums and write us off, then <laughs> you pretty much end your fucking, end your chances a bit, you know. So all we ask for is just a little bit of courtesy on the forum. We let Jolita back on. Yeah, what? We let her on again. Yeah. Is she is she on the forum today? No, no, no. Oh, just the first time she flipped out. Okay, okay. But yeah, we're about getting the message out there. And but you know, anyway, anyway. Another question. Post your questions down below. I don't even watch the Olympics anymore because it's such a corporate bullshit. Whatever TV channel wins their rights, they start advertising almost a year in advance that the Olympics are coming. Fuck off is what I say. When the Winter Games was in Canada a few years back, people who volunteered were given uniforms, um, some type of overclothing gear. The ones who did not own Nike shoes had to put thick, non-see-through tape over any visible non-Nike brand. Can you fucking believe that? Had to cover non-Nike brands on volunteers running shoes, not to mention allowing pro athletes to be in certain events is bullshit. I was supposed to be an amateur athlete, so not hockey. Blah, blah, blah. So yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's a cutthroat world, man. It's a cutthroat world. I mean, can you understand the pressures to use drugs as an Olympic athlete? You know, it's, it's cutthroat, man. It is fucking cutthroat, and it's, it's, it's just crazy. The, the sporting federations don't care. They're like, fuck it, we just want it. We want to have champions. You know, we want our nation to be ahead of the other nation. They don't care what the athletes have to go through. They don't care if you get caught doing drugs. They're like, eh, whatever. It's, it's cutthroat, man. It's a cutthroat world we live in. It's a cutthroat world we live in. Let me get some snippets for this thing. Another question. Could you please do a response video to Doug's current video? What is the least toxic cook food backup? Love to hear your comments. So Doug put up a video um, on his channel about what's the, someone, the question was, what's the least toxic cook food backup plan? I think whenever we start calling organic steamed rice and broccoli toxic, then we're on the edge of creating eating disorders, I feel. But Doug said in that video, there's no option. It's fruit or it's nothing. The dad will be the first one to admit he eats cooked nuts, cooked tahini, almond butters. And I think going to fat instead of fruit is a bad idea. What I think the best idea is, is if you can't get your fruit, don't go to the fat, go to the starches. But starches make you fat, how? Look at it, look at my arm. How much fat is on that arm? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, where's the fat, man? Where's the fat? Starches don't make you fat. I've heard Doug say starches lead to obesity. I'm like, come on, Doug, man. You're a smart fucking guy. You know there's a, such a thing as a country called Kenya and Thailand and Uganda and Indonesia and China and Thailand, etc. You know these, these people live on starches as a staple. White refined rice, refined corn, as in Kenya, they're not obese. They're not obese. So when Doug says that starches cause obesity... <laughs> It's, it's crazy. So we promote the, the starch backup plan, definitely. 
definitely we do. Because it works, man. It's great. So all you do when you tell people that there's no option but fruit, that's a great thing to say to people who live in you know, Chanterbury, Thailand, and then they're never going to leave. Or they live, they live in uh, Berkeley, California. They live across the street from the Berkeley Bowl, and they're never going to leave that ever, ever again. They're going to live on Telegraph Ave or you know, one of those roads, and they're gonna, <laughs> never going to leave, ever. They're going to stay there, and they're going to be at Berkeley Bowl every day for the rest of their life. I agree, because you, you pretty much every time you go to Berkeley Bowl, you can get some sort of good quality fruit. Pretty much most of the time. Dates. So if you're prepared to eat dates every time for the rest of your life, then then do that. For sure. Because yeah, it's a great option. But to tell people that other you know, that's all there is. But when Doug doesn't even Doug doesn't even walk his talk. He says it's fruit or you skip a meal. You skip a meal. The Doug will admit he'll smash down a half jar of uh, more of tahini with celery or whatever in a sitting. So I like to walk my talk. I'll tell you if you can't get fruit, drink bottled juice, tin fruit, cooked vegan starches. Try it out. See what works for you. I walk my talk. I walk my talk. Too many people don't walk their talk. And and that's why <laughs> that's why the Thai fruit festival is gonna be different because what we eat is what we eat versus what we eat at the festival we don't actually eat when we go home from that or whatever. You know what I mean? It's nuts. So I think Doug has some excellent things to, to share. Of course he does, that's why we've been ready for so many years, but with videos like that, it's, it's you pretty much guarantee that your audience is always gonna be pretty, pretty limited and that people are always gonna fail. Because when you have a mentality of all or nothing, only fruit, you're gonna fail. Pretty much, 100% of the time, you're gonna fail. When he, Doug doesn't even do it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, that doesn't make him a bad person. It just makes for bad advice. It's like me saying, I don't wear a rain jacket when it rains. I don't wear a rain jacket when it rains. But I've got a fucking Gore-Tex jacket in my back backpack. <laughs> so when it rains, I put the Gore-Tex jacket on. I don't. If there's no fruit, I don't eat. But I'm eating fucking teeny or cook nuts or whatever. Don't eat cooked food, because that's bad. Doug's basically saying in that video that cooked nuts, rancid nuts, heated nuts are better than some steamed potatoes or whatever. But then in, if you read the 801010 book, Doug says always go the high carb version over the high fat version. So Doug contradicts himself. I think, I don't know, you know what Doug's thinking. Maybe he's getting too many late nights or whatever. Um, but that's my critique of that one. I don't hate Doug. I'm disappointed in Doug and in, in who he sort of turned out to be. But everyone's got their flaws, you know. I'm not perfect. But again, I don't pretend to be perfect either. I think that's the difference. And the one I've learned is uh, don't try to pretend to be perfect or holier than now. Because eventually people find out the truth. And you're going to get disappointed. You're going to get disappointed. Let's do another question. Haha, <laughs> you're so right about people who say hugs and kisses all the time. They are so fake. Always saying hugs, kisses on Facebook or Instagram, but in real life they are just shit. They don't care about anyone but themselves. They just use people for their own benefits, I have found out that lots of people out there think, what can you do for me? I hate that attitude. I like honest and kind people who are willing to help others and doing right and freely are both in my opinion. But thanks for that vote of confidence. You know, it, <laughs> it is, yeah, 
because but that's the thing. I understand why you know, people they love the fake people because they see it on TV and then even, but just be real I mean just be real I remember when Anne Osborne I wrote her and said did you vote me off the pioneers list she says no and I wrote to Doug I said did you vote me off you know Woodstock Fruit Festival thing and he's like no nah. so they both just lied to me and then <laughs> and then in Doug's was, and uh, Anne's response was like you know love and peaches is kiss 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 but you just wrote me off you know sort of like <laughs> it's cutthroat man it's a cutthroat world out there even in the fruitarian world it's fucking cutthroat unfortunately um, but you see it all the time you know love and hugs kisses kisses but I'll fucking sue your ass or you know I'll happily uh, take you out if you get too competitive <laughs> nuts another question has Doug Christina or Mike or any of them been in contact with you since all of this Mike was the one who gave us a heads up he's basically said guys you know, this is how it is, man. You really got to do something different. Everyone wants you off. They want you out. They're jealous of you. They fucking don't like you. They're fake as fuck. They don't, you know. So Mike, even though Mike, end of the day, has a large pull on it, he gave us a heads up. So that was good. Christina and Doug, there was no mention. None of them wrote to us in advance saying, look, yeah, this is what's happening, man. Only Mike did that. Only Mike did that. They were, <laughs> Christine and Doug, they like, if we can get them off, that's more for us. That's more for us. <laughs> get them out of here. They're taking up too much space. <laughs> the funny thing is Doug and Christine will eventually take themselves out anyway because they always start to compete for the limelight. So once you get Freely and Drew out, then they're in the middle and then look at each other. It's a bit like in a bike race, right? You, you'll have like 10 people in the, in the attack group going up the mountain and then it's whittled down, you keep attacking each other, going faster and faster, and they, they get dropped. And then it's just you and a few other people. And then you start looking at each other, going, all right, now it's you, now you gotta go. So <laughs> what happens is they just, it's just this competitive, like ugly competitive. The word competition means competere, a Latin word, which means strive together, you know, so. But whenever you put money on something, man, When he put, I mean, Doug's highly motivated by money. You can see how much he charges for his events, which is fine. Christina's highly motivated by significance, by fame, which is fine. But when you step in front of these people, in front of their goal, they'll knock you out the way like a fucking, like you're an ant. They'll just like flick you out the way. So understand who you're dealing with. Understand who you're dealing with. So we got another question. Why did you go vegan, Harley? Is your family vegan? Were you raised vegan? I wasn't raised vegan. I went vegan in April 2001. For many reasons, but I'll, I'll be honest and admit that it was health that really motivated me to get into the vegan lifestyle. And what kept me here was health and ethics ethics primarily because I go oh, I could eat a steak you know, a few times a year wouldn't matter but the ethics always keep me from doing that always keep me from doing that so I got into it for health reasons I had chronic fatigue I had like a leukemia like blood condition I had asthma I had uh, Crohn's disease bad acne arthritic joints at an early age um, bad digestion just it, you know, insomnia issues just always not feeling good general malaise general dis-ease and then I did, read a few books about vegan lifestyle and got into it in April 2001 committed to it and never looked back since so my family everyone thought I was crazy my brother Julian now he eats a, a vegan lifestyle he's really into it it's just pretty cool and I never told him to do it I think he's just watched my videos and thought yep yeah, looks tasty I can probably do that and, and my brother Julian, he's an animal lover as well. He loves animals, you know. He's got a pet cat, so he's he's a natural vegan. Um, my mother, she's clinically obese, and she used to be really thin and quite attractive, but now she's clinically obese. She thinks a vegan diet is bad because you don't get enough protein, <laughs> even though <laughs> even though Durin Rider is her son. 
the guy who cycled over 250,000 kilometers on a vegan diet, my, my obese mother, whom I love a lot, but I don't have much contact with these days because you know, I'm just busy helping other people who want to be helped. So if my mom wanted to help her, definitely I'd, I'd, I'd help her out, but she doesn't want it. She wants to keep destroying her health. So I have to be accepting of that. Just be accepting of that and yeah, and she does what she wants to do and I'll do what I want, what I want to do and it's all good. So you gotta strip it back down to the bare things. And that's what a vegan diet does. That's what we do in our forum is we strip your diet right down to the bare bones, the fruits and vegetables, you know? And we say no onion, no garlic, no salt, no oil. Strip it right back. So you have that bare bones frame. You can work on that. You can add things in if you want. Add them in, experiment, didn't work. Add a bit this in, whatever. But you've got that bare bones template to go with. And until you do that, you're not really gonna know what you, what you enjoy and what works for you. So that's why we do what we do. That's why we're so you know, purity, whatever minded in our forum. Because we give that basic bare bones, strip it back, go from there, go from there. I would love to live in a world where you know, I could just get my rum for it. Or this pineapple juice would be just fresh. I'd just ring them up and say, drop it around, fresh organic pineapple juice. <laughs> but I can't do that, man. I couldn't afford it, but I can't get it. There's no one in Australia I could call right now and say, oh, give me a fresh, sugar-rich, organic pineapple juice today or next 10 minutes. I could bring up Domino's Pizza right now and order 50,000 calories of pizza, literally, but I couldn't ring up anyone in Australia and say I would like an organic, fresh pressed, super sweet and ripe pineapple juice. Thanks, I'll pay you 50 bucks. I couldn't do that. People go, oh, I can get organic pineapple. Some tart acid thing you could probably get. But I mean real deal shit, like this is the real deal. The pineapples they're using for this are definitely hand selected ripeness, all right? They're so sweet. So. So did my family support me in my vegan cause? Definitely not. Was I expecting my support from my family? Definitely not. Don't expect support when you wanna do things that are the opposite of what everyone else does. If you wanna be a pioneer, you really gotta do things that in your heart, you know they're the right thing to do, and you do those no matter what other people say. That for me is what being a pioneer is about. So you do in your heart what is the right thing to do, no matter what everyone else is gonna say. No matter what the consequences, you do what you wanna do. And you know, and that's easy when it's changing your diet. Even though most people unfortunately would rather die than change their diet. That's that's the unfortunate reality. My mother would rather die from heart disease or a stroke or type 2 diabetes, then change your diet. And I have to accept that. It's hard to accept, but you have to, because otherwise you just, you burn yourself out, you know? You'll burn yourself out. So you just gotta be accepting, move on, and give your time and energy for people who really want it. Like you, the audience. That's what I give my time and energy to. So there's a few questions there. I'll strip this bike off. Why did I strip it off? Because this derailleur keeps snapping off and I'm taking it to a, a carbon repair guy. So Cervelo is a, it's a nice bike, but it's, this, this is Cervelo. Basically Cervelo, in my opinion, it's made in Asia. It's made very cheap. It doesn't cost much money, but they, because of the branding, that fake branding, like, what's Cervelo? This is very complicated. It's just all fake. These bikes are as good as any bike you pick up from China these days, you know, <laughs> but that's all it is, man. It's just a piece of plastic from China, from Taiwan, at a crazy price tag where you can get a giant or something that's actually even better, with better warranty service. But the good thing about the Cervelo is when they do break, because a lot of them break, you can fix them. You can just get some super glue in there and we'll bond it up, crack it in there. But it's a bit like life, you know. I remember I wrote to the Cervelo support and said, you know, I'm gonna keep snapping my derailleur in my frame, what can we do? And they're like, yeah, nothing. <laughs> I'm like, oh, just, you know, I'll give you guys a bit of promotion on YouTube and that, you know. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> just fake, man. 
you know it's like thanks mate see you later <laughs> that's the world you live in so support people who support you and the people who write you off or whatever just drop them man you know if they don't support your cause just find someone else who will but bottom line you got to support yourself in today's world you got to support yourself because if you rely on other people to get the job done for you then pretty much you're going to be disappointed so calm the fuck up or above all get your sleep get your water don't take anything too personally learn from life lessons move on don't carry too much baggage live lightly have fun above all have fun and follow your heart do what your heart says no matter what anyone else says listen to your heart if you don't it's a lot of pain in life you're gonna get burnt you're gonna get burnt if you you're gonna burn yourself if you don't follow your heart pretty much because if I follow my heart I'll get burnt by other people yeah the only people who can really burn us is ourselves end of the day so you're better off doing what you want to do by following your heart than living up to other people's expectations that's my feeling anyway on that note I'm going to knock back another one and knock back another one <laughs> two down Another one to go. Give it a shake. Pop her off. Pop it off. Consistent. That's what you love. Consistent. I bet what's happening is they've got to deal with some farm where they pick the pineapples just at the right time and they have a grading process because it's just consistent and it's just good sugar content. Very good. Very good. Another juice. It's a very hot day today. It's about 100 Fahrenheit. I always notice on the first hot day, my appetite just <laughs> drops right down. I'm struggling to eat much today. Not much appetite. Been hanging out, talking a lot. Mm. The juice is good. So I've had about six of these. Hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six of these today. 500 calories each. About 3,000 calories. Had about. 100 grams of coconut sugar today in a drink bottle I took with me. Had 100 grams, so, that's right. so about about 3,400 calories today. Just really light juice, not much solid, no, no solid food today. Hot day, the first day, my computer's flashing around. The first day of the hot weather, because Adelaide it's like cold one day, hot next, you know, it's jumping around. Always first, body's adapting a bit. Tomorrow I'll catch up though, or the next few days I'll catch up on calories, even though I didn't eat much today. This is good stuff, man. This is good. I'm glad for the backup plan. <laughs> I was reading a post from Don Bennett today. And I don't hate Don at all. Um, he trash talks a bit the hate site, so we deleted him off our we deleted him off our forum because he was trashing us on the on the, on the 30 bananas a day sucks.com hate site. So he was trashing us, so we deleted him. But we don't hate him. But anyway, who's saying it? You should never have a backup plan. You should not eat if you can't get fruit. And he will go, he won't eat. And I'm like, that's exactly why Don isn't fit. <laughs> he can't maintain fitness. Well, that's why he can't travel much because he's restricted his diet down to fruit, which is good, but it's not good if you want to travel and be really fit because there's going to be a time where you can't get your fruit. So Don wouldn't drink this, even though it's 100% fruit, organic, vegan, because it's heated too high for Don, which is cool. But it's a purity mindset I think is unrealistic in today's world. If you want to travel or if you want to be fit and you want to have a fruit and you can't drink a bottle of organic fruit juice, I think your diet's too restrictive, in my opinion. There's a time where I wouldn't have drank this before. I would have had some raw nuts that aren't even raw because they're cooked. But I wouldn't drink this because it's overtly cooked. This is it's nonsense, really. Get your carbs in, have your goal, have your ideal, the fresh fruits, whatever you prefer, and have a backup plan. I want to have a backup plan. Carry a spare. I have a spare with you. And that's why so many people in the raw food movement, even though it's the best way to live, they restrict it so much down that they don't always get enough fuel for when it matters. So then their mood can be up and down, or they just, you know, they, they're not fit, they want to hold a forum. They, like, ATM had a forum for a couple of weeks, <laughs> they couldn't maintain it. You know, it takes a lot of energy, a lot of carbs. To maintain a form, if you're off in the fairies hugging unicorns, 
while you're trying to fast or live on cashew butter and orange juice or whatever, you won't have enough energy to do get shit done. I mean, you can delegate to other people or whatever, but you won't have enough energy to create it and maintain it. So have a backup plan. That's the biggest lesson I've learned in uh, almost 13 years vegan is have a backup or 12 years in the raw foods lifestyle. Because vegan's easy. You get fucking food anyway, but the raw food... Filling up, I used to fill up on nuts. So I remember going to eating a bag of cashew, cashews once. They weren't even fucking raw anyway. <laughs> I spent 60 bucks on a kilo bag of cashews. It wasn't even raw. All cashews are cooked. 100% of cashews cooked. Because they contain a toxic compound that must be heat treated. Otherwise, if you put that in your lips, you bu- look it up. You try eating a raw cashew. Actually, don't try it because you'll go end up in hospital or burn your lips in half from the acid. That, that the, uh, the acid, the little, is poison. Check it out. Cashew, raw, cashew, poison. And I'd be eating nuts instead of carbohydrates. And then I wouldn't go training the next day or the next week. And my fitness was just like blah, 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 blah. Even though I'm eating the best diet in the world, I got poor fitness. So people are going, wow, your raw food diet works great. Not. Fruit's the best. Have a backup plan. Don't know how many million times I have to say that.